Okay, two major key terms that we're going to need to know for this page. We're going to need to know the xylem. They're unlikely to ask you that as a key term, but the two things we're likely to be asked is using transpiration and cohesion. So transpiration is the evaporation of water from the leaves and it evaporates through the stomata. And cohesion, cohesion is cohesive, it means like sticking together. So water molecules basically stick to each other because they're polar. They've got a delta positive end and a delta negative end. And if you need more information on that, then see the video on water. So what do we need to know about the xylem itself? Well, the xylem, basically, it transports water and minerals, nothing else. If you're wondering what minerals are, they're inorganic, so they don't have carbon in them. So sodium, phosphorus, all these things but not amino acids, not glucose. Those are organic compounds and we don't call them minerals. The direction is up only. Doesn't go down, can only go up. And what do they look like? Well, let's draw a bit of a diagram. Pretty simple, really. They're hollow tubes and they're actually dead. There is no living cells in there. They've got a coating on them called lignin. You don't need to know that, but it basically kills the cells and provides them, makes them very strong. And as a result of their being dead, they don't have to have any walls between them. So it's a hollow tube. So the significance of them being dead is that there's no cell walls between cells. Okay, so we're going to look at a little bit of cohesion tension theory. This is the theory by which water molecules get pulled up the xylem. So we're going to use our key term, first of all, transpiration. So transpiration is taking place whenever the cell's respiring, and sorry, photosynthesizing, I should say, it's respiring all the time. So whenever it's photosynthesizing, the stomata are open, water's going to come out the stomata, and that's going to create low pressure at the top of the xylem. Okay, so you've got low pressure, you've got to pull, basically. You've got to pull on the top of that water column, and that's what creates the tension. If this was another liquid and it wasn't water, water that wasn't cohesive, this probably wouldn't work. The column of water would break. The, the strength of bonds between the molecules wouldn't be enough to support their own weight. But water is so sticky, it sticks to each other and it can support its own weight in a column. So basically water is just sucked up to the water molecules, just like a straw. You create low pressure at the top by sucking or by the transpiration taking place through the stomata that creates a pull on the top. And because the water molecules are cohesive, there's cohesion. So this is the cohesion tension theory of how water gets to the top of the xylem. And it, remember, it's up only. There are a couple of factors which are going to affect the rate of transpiration. And we're going to look at those here. Okay, so the first factor that's gonna, there's no particular order, you don't have to remember these in a particular sequence, but there are four of them, so we're gonna, I'm gonna number them. Well, first of all, we're gonna have temperature. Pretty obvious, the higher the temperature, we've got more kinetic energy, there's gonna be more evaporation, there's gonna be more transpiration and more pull up the xylem. Second factor, we've got light. Well, light, obviously, the stomata are only open when the photo plant is photosynthesizing. So when the stomata are open, that's when this is going to take place. Number three, these two, three and four, basically are going to go together. And the, the reason why they affect the rate of transpiration is the same. So I'm going to group them together. So we've got humidity and we've got wind or air movement. So both of these affect the water vapor gradient. So this, if it's really dry outside, then the moistness of the leaf is going to have a beat steep vapor gradient. And so more water will diffuse out by transpiration. If it's very humid outside, it's very wet outside, or there's not very much wind, then there won't be a huge vapor gradient. And so there won't be so much transpiration.
The tool with which you use to measure, and some of you may do this in school practicals, the rate of transpiration is called a potometer. You don't really need to know beyond the experimental design, and that you're going to do in school, and it is in the textbooks as well. If I have time, I'm going to do a series on the practicals, the required practicals you need to do, and some useful vocabulary you can use when you're writing about them in your exam.